So let's think about the right way to do it, which uh, you guys have now achieved. So we've got some pictures. Tell us what we're looking at. Barry? That's a four mile long arms, two of them, perpendicular to each other. And we make, send light from a laser, split it so it goes down both arms and comes back. And if the arms are equal length, we make them cancel each other. The light cancels, the cancels. against itself. And that's yeah. and how to think about that. Can you give us a way of thinking about it? Uh, the, the light ha- comes in a waveform. Yep. And as it goes down one arm and comes back, and, and goes down the other arm and comes back, we reverse one com- compared to the other so that there's a black. So like a peak and a trough are kind of crossing each cross other. Each cancels each other, out. and it's black. And if one of the arms gets a little longer than the other one, they get out of time, and then we see light. And that's the simple, simplest picture. Yeah, well, Precisely. we're going to try to do a, a version of it here, if you don't mind. And I've, I've tried to do this experiment before. I've always been very nervous about whether it's going to work or not. I'm not the slightest bit nervous because I'm not doing it. One of you experts is going to do it. Can you bring out this uh, interferometer, if you will, from, from behind this? i that So here we have... A slightly smaller version of what you just <laughs> described. So, I mean, I'm going to turn it on and then uh, ask one of you guys to explain what's actually happening here. Wow, we actually have some, some fringes. Can you get those up on, the, up on the screen? I should not be standing here. Nergis, would you do this and, and just take us through what's happening there? Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, it, it's an interferometer, and what we have here is a laser. It's actually a laser. Very Can you much bring like the a, lights down a little bit like, over like here? Like a laser pointer. And we have a mirror here that's a special mirror that takes half the light and lets it go through it, and the other half of the light gets reflected from the, the mirror. Oh, you know, in the old days when people smoked, you would just like light up a cigarette and make this all happen. <laughs> but uh, uh, Much but more now. PC now. <laughs> yeah. This is bug spray, by the way. You know, you know. Uh, uh, good, it'll kill the roaches too. Mm-hmm. So, so what happens is, <laughs> The light then reflects off of these two mirrors and comes back to this beam splitter. And then just as Barry explained, if the peaks of the light line up with each uh, each other, the light in each arm, then you get a bright part of light on the screen. And in the places where the peaks line up with troughs, the two waves cancel and you get a dark fringe. And so what you can see as you go through looking at those, wherever you see dark stripes, those are regions of, of, of space where the peaks lined up with the troughs and the, and the light beam canceled itself. And so our measurement in LIGO is pretty much just that, which is that we operate it under normal circumstances where we make the two light beams cancel each other, so it's dark. And then when a gravitational wave comes by, it gets tiny bit brighter. And we can measure that tiny bit brighter. Now, there's one other thing that's very interesting to see on this picture here. The dark st- between the dark stripes and the, and the bright stripes is about, it's, it's a fraction of the wavelength of the light. And so right here on this screen, you're seeing separations that are of order a fraction uh, of a micron, so about 10 to the minus 6 meters. I'm trying to convert that into units that we understand. Uh, it's, the spacing is, is, is a fraction of a hair of mine. So you can see right here on a screen with a simple apparatus like this, and more or less with our eyes, in going between bright and dark, we are seeing differences of about you know a fraction of, of my hair between these two arms. Now, and if you just hold still for one second, uh-huh. can we can we make this as stable as we can? So everybody, please just hold your hold breath, <laughs> don't move, and we're getting relatively. Uh, my talking is now messing it up. I'm gonna talk really softly right now, right here. But there you go. And then if a gravitational wave, obviously this is sensitive to all sorts of disturbances, mm-hmm. not just gravitational right. waves, but the point is, how, I mean, disturbance by yelling at it. Can you get this let's, to move let's, by? Let's clap. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming. It's been a very enjoyable day. Thank you very much. No, but there you go. So, and, and what you guys need to do, presumably, is to isolate your four kilometer long version so that when people clap or a tree falls or someone revs a motorcycle engine, it doesn't shake like this. So the only way that it will shake is if a gravitational wave rolls by. Exactly. And presumably that is the challenge. So thank you for this little demo here. (laughs) 